I want to jump around a little bit to um, operational risks on behalf of institutional investors who are looking for allocations in, in digital assets because perhaps um, it's very easy to make an investment case for digital assets, uh, huge TAM or low-hanging fruit for alpha. Um, the, where you get tripped up, though, in investing in crypto is usually on the operation side. We've had so many problems with centralized exchanges and, and hacks on bridges, et cetera. There's a lot of risks there. So um, you could argue that operational due diligence is more important than investment due diligence in this new niche asset class. Um, and I'm sure this is the question you get a lot. So I'd love to hear um, how you answer it, what you think. Well, it has changed and evolved. And I see that as a very positive change in the industry. Uh, we have to remember when we started our company in 2017, there were not vendors or service providers for crypto. Nobody wanted to touch us. And I come from a background of traditional finance where even the administrator was Citco. So when I started the fund, I thought it was going to be very easy, and it wasn't. We were not even able to open a bank account because banks didn't understand crypto at all. Um, Likewise, you know, with ODD companies, you know, they will not understand crypto, and a lot of the companies were charging us like $15,000 per due diligence on each hedge fund manager, but they didn't even know what questions to ask or even look at their processes. So we have to do it our own, and we have built a very robust ODD process. Um, Again, at the beginning, many of the managers, they wouldn't share with us their data. They wouldn't even tell us, you know, what was the cost of the solution they were using or the exchanges. And, but there were so many few managers in the space that sometimes we were like pushed or obligated to deploy capital in these managers. Now it's different. Like we really take the time. We have, again, a very robust system. We ask quantitative and qualitative questions, you know, and we have a rating system and after that, we meet with them in person, we have periodical calls, we review the statements, we review where they're generating the alpha and what are their service providers they're using in the space. And we have calls and even meetings with these service providers. You really have to go deep into the processes of each manager and it takes time. Chris, what, um, continuing on this theme, what are the questions, if, if you have an uh, experience hedge fund investor who knows long short equity, what are the questions he should ask you about the operational side of, of your fund? What are the themes? Well, I think it, very clearly where and how do you trade um, because trading on exchanges and trading offshore is, is very different than trading with trusted OTC counterparties. Um, and that can open a Pandora's box to risk as well. Um, particularly given that we've had a number of exchanges which have shut down. Um, I would think the second is, uh, do I even recognize the name of your banking partner here? Um, because as, as Paulo mentioned, it is hard for certain crypto funds to get banked. Um, luckily, we, we got uh, Boney set up um, right in advance of, uh, of March because a lot of people were struggling. Uh, in, uh, in that time frame to get banking uh, counterparties set up. Um, you know, I think in any, any hedge fund manager, they're always thinking about risk versus reward, sharp ratios. And any manager that won't tell you what their monthly volatility is or, or when, what markets they think they should do well in, um, that's a big red flag. Um, you know, crypto has enough risk already. And if, you know, you want to invest in a crypto hedge fund or a crypto long only, it's very easy to get passive exposure with Bitcoin right now. So, you know, what's the sharp ratio of this hedge fund net of fees relative to, to just owning Bitcoin? And if there's no good reason for that, um, most likely they're not going to share the data with you because they know that. So those are some of the red flags that I would look out for whenever you're talking to, uh, to potential managers. 